Hi Flosstube, welcome back to my wee world. Gosh, I'm glad to be back. It's been a crazy February. Unbelievable. Um, for those of you new to my channel, this is a channel about cross stitch, a little bit of quilting and sharing some of my vintage treasures that I've picked up along the way. That can be everything and anything, literally, that takes my fancy. So, oh my lord, with all my great intentions of uh, a video every two weeks until I got used to setting up the phone and the lighting and getting in front of the camera, then what goes and happens, but I wake up one of the mornings about three and a half weeks ago, I think it was, and uh, I was having a cup of coffee in bed and flicking through Facebook and Instagram and messages that I'd got and uh, didn't think anything of it. Then I uh, went downstairs to go on my laptop and I noticed out of the corner of my eye that my phone, my landline was flashing. And... Uh, it said no connection and I'm like, huh? Well, what's this? Now, I'm not the most techie when it comes to the computer stuff. I'm pretty okay when it comes to like my day job as regards picking up new software and everything else. I kind of throw myself in and get used to it. But the world of like modems and technology and all that is just, oh my heavens above, all night go on the internet and spend hours researching. So there was no internet connection and I thought, okay, maybe they're doing something in the building because my apartment is part of, there's about six other apartments, eight I think we're in total, yeah, um, in the block. And I thought, well, maybe they've just switched it off to do something with that. Um, give it an hour or so. And, then, and I went on the phone and was looking for uh, any disruptions in the area that flag up and there were lots and it was like okay grand just give it an hour and a half or so it's not the end of the world but the day went on and I was like so I rang up the service center of my internet provider and uh, they were like no there's nothing in your area that we can see and I'm like hmm okay and then I'm thinking okay now I know this from before so I got on to, I managed to keep the number of one of the service technicians and uh, call them and they're like, okay, we'll book an appointment for a technician to come out. Because I thought there was a bit of drilling going on a couple of days ago in the building. And I thought, sure, wouldn't you know, it could be somebody that's drilled through one of the cables or something or God knows what and mucked up it all up in the house. Uh, it wasn't that. And then I noticed, um, I asked my neighbour next door, have you got internet? And she goes, oh, well, it was out for a while, she goes, but uh, we're with the Deutsche Telekom that I'm not with. Um, they're the copper pipelines in this area. I'm with fibre optic. I switched over with another provider. And um, I said, right, okay, um, that's maybe then there's just something with the, the modem or something. So we booked a technician and then... Um, it uh, it got cancelled. I got a message saying it's cancelled. Oh, by the way, this is about cross stitch. I'm just rambling a bit because it's been three weeks of not having internet access and being out of touch completely. So bear with me. And uh, so I rang back again and oh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No hope in the day. And uh, they said all I could get in the information was um, it's a break in the area. Um, but what kind of break? No idea. And we were like, well, what kind of work is it? When is it going to get fixed? No idea. No idea. Couldn't give any information. Da, 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 da. So one day without internet. And I thought, okay, well, fine. Then, the, you know, it's not the end of the world. This went on for days and days. So I'm not going to go into how many times I crawled up ringing. And in the end, I went back to my local shop um, where I do all my contracts with because Doing them online is one thing. It's completely different when I find when you go in and you talk to someone and you say what you need and what you want if you change the contract or you're doing whatever. I like the personal face-to-face -face contact. I'm a people person and I just like that. Well, they were brilliant and I must admit they are absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and I went into the shop and then she started, I rang them up first of all, and they started hunting and whatever. And then cut a long, long story short. It was a fiber optic break in the main fiber optic cable line, a couple of streets over, which meant there was a whole area that couldn't access 
that was with this service provider that couldn't access um, internet. So it wasn't something in the house, it wasn't something in the street nearby, there was nothing we could really do. But of course, you know, why don't they tell you that information in the service centre? Rant over. So then I'm like, oh, well, when are they going to get that fixed? Because I remember years ago hearing about some trawler or something that cut a fiber optic line somewhere in the Atlantic and it took them ages for it to get repaired. So I'm thinking, I can't be weeks and weeks and weeks without internet. Well, I was, but anyway, um, the phone Facebook modem. And yes, I know about all the hotspots. I found that out a week later and all the rest of it, but then I didn't have enough data on my um, phone for the second phone that is my private phone. And uh, there was a nice bill at the end of the month, but I am going to plan on getting some of that back because that wasn't my fault. But anyway, and they've agreed to it, so it's good. Babble, stop babbling, Martina. So three and over three weeks. And then when it did get back and got fixed, the modem wasn't talking to it properly. So it had it sporadically for a day and then it was churning like it was in the old days when you were trying to upload or Google anything or look for anything. Um, so then the service center, very nice lady on there that I'd never spoken to before. She was fab and she said, unconnect everything and they'll do something from their side. This is like 11 o'clock at night and, um, and tweak it. And since then it's been back. So that is the story of me not having internet access. And I had, I popped over to a friend of mine's to read emails and, and send off emails and everything else, because I tend to like to do those on my laptop. Um, I will reply on comments and things on my mobile phone and I'll do Facebook and Instagram on the mobile phone, but emails I tend to, or anything else I have to do, pay bills and everything, I, I want to do it on my laptop. I'm, I'm just a bit old fashioned that way. So that was the fun and games, but it was, so yeah, I sound excited and blah, 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 but it was more like relief. And I'm sure some of you were wondering, and I was getting comments on posting, yeah, yeah, I'll be posting a next blast tube in a couple of days and then a week and then nope, it's not working out again, but I'm back now. So I'm going to post another floss tube in a week's time to make up for, you know, the three weeks that you who subscribed didn't unsubscribe and stuck with me and all your patience and thank you very, very much. Um, okay, so where else have I been? That's one little story, but I don't want to start off the whole floss tube thing talking about the little things in between. I'll... Uh, Oh, well, maybe I will. Okay. So then what else has been happening? Well, when I didn't have the internet, I discovered books again. And I have a big library of books over there um, that I've collected. I love reading, just I haven't had really an awful lot of chance to really do reading. I used to just read a couple of pages um, before going to bed or whatever. But books have been just designing like crazy, sewing nuts quilting nuts and I haven't actually had much time to just pick up a book but of course when you don't do internet and so you don't have you know I can't watch YouTube I can't watch floss tube I can't do anything then a book is quite nice and then I have been stitching and I have a new release to show you and I have a new sampler to show you and some questions to ask about what you think about that and um, a little giveaway as well on my new release. So bear with me till the end or scroll forward till the end if you don't want to watch the video uh, or near the end. But um, I caught up with reading some books. So that was quite nice. Um, my friend Mary had gifted me a book um, for Christmas. So I read that and I can show that again. Uh, it was a good book in another video. And I went back and forth to the dentist. So my teeth are kind of funny at the moment because I'm going to the dentist. We waited, we started it all off in October and then for the health insurance, they had to wait probably till January because they were so slow getting all back because why the work needed to be done, da, 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 da. They did get back and then we started it in the beginning of February. So there's been quite a lot of work that needed doing because my teeth were thinning at the front um i grind my teeth 
not that that's you don't really need to know that and I've lost you but anyway that's the truth and there was a lot of wear and tear but uh, trying to get that fixed it's like back and forth to the dentist every week and I thought so they're kind of got temporary teeth kind of coatings on at the moment that are not me so I feel a little bit funny in my mouth so bear with me but uh, yeah hopefully next Tuesday then the last little bit of work will be done and uh, kind of have normal teeth again they're not false teeth I'm not quite that age yet um but I'm getting there but uh what was I going to say and then of course we've had lockdown and um, the shops were supposed to open on the 1st of March I think they did and then I read today and I haven't been out of the house I'm trying to protect close friends neighbors my next door neighbor, um, we're very close. I'm very, very close with them and her husband's going through a hard time. And um, I don't want to risk picking up any of the virus and carrying it to them, even with a mask. Because over here, you can't wear cloth masks anymore. You've got to wear the FPP2 or FFP2 masks everywhere. And um, they've banned cloth masks and whatever. Well, actually, I've got a bundle of cloth masks. Um, I think I made about, well, at least 10, if anybody needs any. Um, preferably not post into the States at the moment, but anywhere within Germany or a little bit closer in Europe, give me a, a shout and I'll pop those couple of masks off to you. Uh, well, Germany wouldn't make any sense. So maybe the UK, I'd say some of you are allowed to use the cloth masks. I've made them. Um, I can't use them at the moment and I'd rather pass them on to someone. So that's that. You can email me that or post a comment down underneath and we'll get a comment if you need a couple of little masks for personal use. Um, yeah, and then with the lockdown, you couldn't get to the hairdresser. And yeah, I'm a little bit vain, I suppose, um, because I had grey roots that were growing out to about there. And... Unfortunately, there's not enough grey that you can go completely grey and have that lovely silver fox look. Um, so, and I couldn't get to a hairdresser. And then when we had heard that the hairdressers were going to be open on the 1st of March, I was ringing my local hairdresser. Uh, no answer. The one, the new one I found that I really liked. In fairness, she's great. And um, couldn't get an appointment and they didn't have that smart little appointment booking thing on their website so I couldn't book that either and desperation calls and in the middle of it with no internet and all the rest of it I decided to dye my hair myself so it was supposed to be I said this doesn't look too bad of the camera it's quite reddy but in reddish color which is a bit like what I had um for the winter color but the in the daylight it looks much darker funny enough but I didn't go green so that was a plus. It, it was, was a permanent colour and I was worrying about my hair falling out and stuff as well in the middle of it, you know, because it's quite harsh in your hair and my hair is really dry. Enough of all of that. I will get to the cross stitch bit. It's just, you can imagine now the way my month has been. It's been like, oh my God. But uh, yeah, and... Yeah, and it's also, and they're only small stuff. I mean, there are a couple of other little things that are, you know, trying to cope with in my head and worry about. But uh, these are all the little, the little tiny things that like niggle us and drive us a bit batty occasionally. And it's hay fever season again for the tree pollen. And that's just started. Um, so, oops, that beep was my printer talking. And, um... Yeah, so the tree pollen's coming out in full. So uh, that's quite interesting, you know, when you're on antihistamines all the time and everything else. But fine, grand. And uh, just another, before I start talking about finishes, which are, well, one tiny little finish and one, um, I'm now release. Um, I just a wee thought and a hello and a best wish and thinking of you and with you and staying with you to my fel um, friend Helen I won't say her surname because I haven't asked her if I could but um, Helen who is going through a couple of massive operations to get rid of some cancer and she's 
marathon operations one after the other she's still in hospital hopefully it's the final fix um and it's been to do with her face and everything else so we're kind of jokingly saying that she'll come out as if she's had like nose jobs and bone reconstruction and jawline reconstruction but she was beautiful to begin with so the way i'm thinking she's going to be just as beautiful afterwards and uh, we were worried about her because um she i knew when she was going into hospital at the beginning of february and i hadn't heard anything from her then sorry sniffles a little bit um and of course i didn't bring a tissue along as they do but um I know that she was going for the next little operation and it'll be a couple more weeks and she's a strong lady and we need you and love you and you have to stay with us and keep and we'll get you through this there's so many best wishes and prayers and everything and another lady that i'm friends with is tracy and she's done really really well and got through her cancer as well and um i'm delighted for her and i hope it stays all good and all clear and tracy you're in my thoughts as well and i'm not allowed to say any names um there are also family members of mine um one that has just discovered cancer since christmas um and is undergoing treatment and will have to go for an operation and other aunts and relations and cousins and cousins that picked up covid um and things and i'm thinking of you love you to bits and wishing everyone that's suffering from any kind of an illness strength and power and belief that you are loved and you can please fight and get well so that we can all meet up when covid's over and have wonderful happy memories so my love to you for that right sorry for all the rambling to everyone as i said that i'm kind of just so happy to be back and to chat with you and be able to like post up a video because i've been getting a couple of messages are you all right um we haven't heard from you from actually really new to me people um that i haven't known before on facebook or instagram and thank you so much it's been so lovely yes i'm fine and i'm back and it was only the internet but uh, it does mock us up a bit so right that's that little babbling about right now finishes okay so will the first tiny finish now it's not a fully ffo yet because um, I have to go and hunt out something that fits that I had an idea of. I was going to do it differently. And then as I started working on it, I changed my mind. So it's from the book. And you've seen it in my last video that I'd started it. And I posted a wee picture on Instagram. And on Instagram, in fairness, I'm terrible. I've got to keep posting. But I don't post every couple of stitches. I kind of don't post maybe as much as I should. And please do hashtag me on hashtag expanding stitches so that I can see progresses on anything you've done or anything you think I might like or is interesting to me. Please post. I'd love to see more of my hashtag used and be able to have them when people look them up. It'd be lovely. Um, but that's from the Winds of Autumn book um from blackbird designs which we love and it's october 31st and they made this wonderful pin cushion which i might always also make um and i did this one on copper glitter and i did it one over one on 32 count and this is the way it turns out now let me just try to scroll in there you go now the coloring and it's i'm sorry i'm filming again late in the evening but with hay fever, I had to crash until I was awake till five in the morning and I had to crash until about half one and then the daylight goes quickly here. So I had to film tonight. But it's, oh God, what DMC did I use? It was a variegated Colaris. It's in my last video, so go back, I mention it. And then I've just put a little bit of trim around the edge, a velvet little ribbon trim. And I laced it on the back and the lacing is not good. If you can, if you lace as badly as that, 
well then or or worse my lacing isn't good but it it's not too bad it's pretty pretty round i'm happy with it but what i'm actually going to do and i've got it prepared downstairs and i was going to make it just into a little hanging ornament and put a bit of felt on the back and put a little um you know little tag and hang it but then I kind of got a bit carried away and the quilting side of me came out a little bit. Now, I didn't do any quilting on it, but I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to fabric. And I'm a hoarder when it comes to floss as well, even though I've still got loads of other flosses I want to get, like silk. Because um, I haven't done any work on silk yet. And no, yeah, I'm hoping to be able to get some silk. But uh, floss, that is. Um, I was hunting through and um, I was going to just do this, but then I found a batik and I've already got it on the little thing I'm doing. And I think this is going to work really nicely to pull out the colours. So it won't be garish Halloween. It's a batik. I don't know the name of the batik, but I've prepared a little um, square downstairs with another little cutout as well that um, enhances this and i've got some beads as well so it's like everything else when you start ffoing which is why i keep putting them off um you think of one idea and then you keep adding and you keep adding and you keep adding at hours ago but it is fun but i've decided now i know what i want to do i just have to find something in the dimensions so i'm kind of hoping that there might be still a couple of shops open they're talking about doing a kind of semi-lockdown now till the 28th, I saw, over here in Germany, where I live. I'm Irish, but I've been living here for years. And, um, but you can, garden centres are open and drugstores were open and stuff, but the kind of like little crafty shops and the places where you can get picture frames and little pieces like that aren't so i might yeah and my little jumble sales and all that isn't open which is understandable we have to protect everyone from um passing on the, the virus and everything else so I, I can't it just leaves me a wee bit stuck on how i'm going to get it but i might just do a, a we look on etsy and see if there's what i'm looking for but um i think it'll be really cute but this was one over one on 32 count i think it's copper glitter by Swigart and uh, the DMC I mentioned in my last video and there's actually a hunter green so you've seen it so I won't go into too much detail but actually there is something else, and I'll talk about it when I've fully finished I put this I stuck a little bit of wadding around it and I glued the wadding in with just actually an Elmer's water-based glue and even the the purple glue that I use for quilting because it dries clear and it's washable um and then I wrapped the, the 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 linen over the top the 32 count and laced it so that I got it nice and tight because lacing really does for a circle I find lacing really really good so all I did was do a running stitch around this and pulled it in and then laced back and forth I mean, you know when you run out of thread you tie a knot and you pull a little bit more i have to get more strong thread actually it's something i don't have but um and then i just glued on the little trim around the edges and uh, but you know what this is the shape of it and it worked out perfectly and i'm a bit of a devil to tell you the truth for keeping things i think i get it from my dad because I love DIY and I've got as much as I love sewing and quilting and everything else I love tools so I have everything from jigsaws to hammer drills to um oh god cutting those funny cutting kind of tools to a tiny dremel equivalent to lots of other things and not to mention every screw bracket I I, I hoard screws like I hoard buttons <laughs> So and connections and if I do anything breaks down, I'll take it apart and see what I could save out of that. So, uh, but this funny enough, I remember seeing them before and then deciding, well, I wonder, could I ever use that for anything? And I kept the, the tin part and they're Pringles, the crisps, which I do love. I'm addicted to the salt. Well, not addicted, because I try to be good and not to eat a lucky junk. But, uh, 
the sour cream and onion ones I am rather partial to when I can chew, which I can't at the moment. Um, but uh, this is a Pringles lid, the top of it. So underneath, I'll, I can show you the one in the next video that you'll see, but anyway, the no Pringles, the wee plastic lid that's on the top. That's actually what I just used to wrap around and glue it. So, um, I mean, you can use them for multiple things. And I've used even Pringle containers, wash them out, and they store perfectly the bigger um, tea lights where you can drop them all down in it, the, the bigger tea lights that are about, well, that size, a little bit smaller. And you can drop them down into it and pop the lid on and store them. But I do wash them out really, really well. And I mean, obviously, because they're paper and stuff, they won't last that long, but they're kind of handy for keeping them all together. So that's what I do. So uh, I'll show you more of that when it's finished the next time, because sure, it, hopefully it'll be finished in a week or so. But um, I'll get back to that. But yes, I do love it, isn't it? A wee dote. It's so cute. So that's that. And I have a feeling this video is going to split into two and I'm going to be trying to paste the two pieces together again. But you what the harm. Bear with me. I know you're kind out there. Most people. So, well, 99% of the time, I think everybody is wonderful on floss tube and lovely. So, uh, right. So the next thing is, um, oh, sniffles. I should go and get a tissue, really. The next thing is, ah, uh, yeah, my re-release. So, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, March 17th. And being Irish, oh, sure, I love it. And it's only one day, um, but I have the most wonderful memories of my mum and dad bringing me into the city um, where I'm from, which is Galway, and um, in Ireland, the West Coast, that's where I was born. And uh, we'd go into the Galway Parade to watch them in the parade with the bands. And it was a small affair, but very cute. And I remember that when I was really, really young. And St. Patrick's Day has always been something special. And even when I started living over here in Germany, God bless my mum and dad, they used to send over shamrock um, and little labels. OK, with COVID, nobody can do any of that anymore. And, Generally, St. Patrick's Day card and everything. I'm the world's worst with cards, but sending cards. Anyone that knows me, and it's there's no excuse. I just, I always remember way too late and feel so guilty. Same with Christmas cards. Greatest intentions, terrible actual doing it. But my next, my third release... My third design is, uh, I called it Lucky Days because I wasn't too sure. I was coming out with a long mouthful of stuff. And then I thought, well, the days we all have at the moment, then wouldn't it be nice if, you know, all our days were lucky. So I just came up with Lucky Days. It's nothing that original. But the chart definitely is because it's been added to and thought up. And it's, yeah, it's out of my head, which works in mysterious ways. So this is, it's a PDF download at the moment. Um, I'm still getting used to Etsy and Germany has a lot of regulations on packaging. Um, packaging, when you're selling products that are physical products, there's a load of legislation and you have to count even how much tape you're putting on a parcel and register that. So that's all new to me and I'm still working on it. So at the moment they're PDFs. Um, but I am going to, in the future, um, get printers to print or get a printing company to produce my charts in cardstock. And then I'd like to get shops and distributors and um, people that could sell them worldwide, obviously, because there is something lovely about holding a chart that's made of cardstock um, as well as a PDF. Um, and you could always print it out yourself on a kind of a cardstock if you liked that feel. But at the moment, and I've only started the shop in December, I'm sticking with the PDFs for a wee while. And plus it's a bit cheaper for people because they don't have the postage, you know, to the US until I can get a distributor in the US, S, etc. Um, but uh, this is Lucky Days. So I'll see if I can focus in. So... And this is the digital rendition picture because I'm stitching. So I tried to kind of make it look as true as I could to it. So we've got May Luck, 
be with you all your days. And it's a wee leprechaun sitting on a donkey with the cat, his pot of gold. And if you look at his wee foot, you'll see here, the, there. Okay, I'm looking at the screen. I better move forward. There's a little horseshoe. And he's played his fiddle, or as I said in the chart, the violin, because people were thinking, well, the nerds the fiddle. And his little musical notes, so he's playing away to his heart's content. And on the, the side, are, on his jacket, are little um, Celtic knots, Celtic symbols. His little tail coat, and his pot of gold, and the little lucky black cat sitting on the top along for the ride. And the wee donkey nibbling the shamrock with his little kerchief. And then there's some little shamrocks in the grass. And then there's just a little border. Um, you could stitch the border if you want. You don't have to. I just thought it framed it up nicely. So it's 148 stitches um, square. So 148 by 148. And that, you add on a couple more stitches, you know, to the end. It's probably maybe 12 stitches. So it's actually a little bit less if you didn't want the border. Um. And that's lucky days but i'll show you the i'll show you where i am with the stitching of it because i would have loved to have been able to caught a bit go back a bit um i'd love to have been able to have it um all stitched up and um a proper picture of the stitching up on the cover and i might switch over in the pdf to uh whenever it's stitched up and put that on the copy the pdf and then if anyone wants a picture of the front page and the edited finishing of the last page that's purchased the PDF, then you can. But I might just leave it the way it is as well. It's, it's you know, it's, I think people will get the gist. And if they look on here, they'll see it. So where are you? Uh, there you are. Well, I suppose this should really be under whips, but, and the needle's sticking out. Hang on a second. Oh, the needle's not even, okay, I better just pin the needle in here. So they don't lose it. And it's in the queue snap. Uh, sorry for that, but uh, it's just a case of like, I, do, I need to move it over a little bit anyway. So let's just try. That might work. You'll see a little bit. So here we go. So up close. Now I know the lighting won't be the best, but the next video I do, I promise I'll put, do it in daylight. So that now that I've got internet and I can time better. This is on an antique, um, it's hard to see here so well, you don't see it quite so well. It's an antique green mar marbly kind of an effect. I've got it in the chart. It's not the bright, bright green. This was an old scrap that I bought on, I think it was eBay, um, a bundle of old little, um, um, little pieces of vintage Spygart. And I thought, oh, I'll try it. And as it happened, it was the best one that I had at the moment that I thought worked. So you can see a little bit of it, or can you? Maybe that way. Yeah, you can see the effect. It's not grey, it's actually funny enough, a kind of a, a sage green would be the best way. It's not the mint glitzy one that they do in Monaco. Whoops, I'm wobbling the camera. But uh, here we go. So I've stitched up the wee leprechaun. I'm going to go in right quite close. Oh, don't miss stitches on perfect because half of it's the sewing method, half of it's stabbing it, half of it is I stitch in all different directions. There are a couple of long stitches there for the violin, and then there's also the long where am I? Long stitch across his bow. So in the chart I say do that one last, so it looks like the 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 string of the bow is over the top of the violin. And that's a sparkly one, which is in the chart. It's one of the DMC sparkly threads in his hat. And he's also got a little bit of longer back stitch in his booties, or the little boots. And I still have to ha um, stitch in the wee shamrock dangling from his foot there. And I have to back stitch these, though I'm not, you don't have to back stitch them if you didn't want to. I just back stitch them in the chart so that it'd pop a little bit. We've got a tiny little Irish flag. If you want that, you can keep it in there. If not, just stitch over in the brown. And you've got the pot of gold. And the pot of gold, let's see if I can get it in. You've got a couple of the little glitzy DMC threads in there too. 
and I'm moving on to the donkey's head with his little kerchief and the little cat has also got a little bit of the Irish flag in the collar but you could change that up if you wanted with the green white and gold and the wee donkey and his little foot and then you've got the grass but the reason I went there's a lot of stories with this first of all I come from a family that love music and love Irish music and I had relations that used to do quite renowned in the world of Irish set dancing so uh, my aunt that passed away did a lot of Irish set dancing um, um, in, in the groups and she they always loved music and a bit of fun and a bit of crack and he just the idea came for him and you know, you, you often hear the stories of the donkey going one way and the man sitting on the back of the donkey, you know, the farm or whatever, and the donkey bringing him home. There's there's multitudes of stories. And um, I just thought, so it all started off with a wee leprechaun on the back of a donkey. And then it got a little bit bigger because initially it was only this size, but I really wanted to put a little bit more detail. But 148, now that's including the border up here and a few of the musical notes and the writing. So it's not really that big. Um, it doesn't take long to stitch, but people will want it before St. Patrick's Day. Um, so I thought I better release the chart so they can stitch it up if they want to put it up for St. Patrick's Day. And you easily could in um, within two weeks. Not a problem, I think, if you're a quick stitcher. Um, I'm a little bit slower, but that's, um, yeah, that's just the way I'm not oh, the most prolific fast stitcher so I and I take my time but um, because this will be a model so I don't want to just rush it through any other way they need to at least at least look semi okay <laughs> but uh, so the reason uh, so then you've just got a wee brown blanket he's sitting in and then you've got I was trying to think right what would the wee leprechaun um, have and I had him playing his fiddle and the wee lucky horseshoe and the horseshoe always faces up so the luck stays in that's the superstition in Ireland you don't turn a a, a horseshoe down I actually have one over there with uh, the lucky number of holes in the horseshoe that I found in Canada actually in a, um, a farm shop thrown in a bin uh, a, a bin of horseshoes people wanted them to decorate with or whatever and uh, I found the lucky number of holes that were lucky for me and um, I have that over there in my bookshelf but uh, I'll try and do a video on St. Patrick's Day anyway um, just because but uh, so the horseshoe faces upward because it says you keep the luck in rather than the other way up where the luck could fall out and then the pot of gold now the pot of gold is actually on a little three-legged pot and these were the typical pots in Ireland that you actually cooked on over a fire and I remember my grandmother having one of the when she I was much younger she had one of the big fireplaces in her house that you actually could sit into and there was the old um cast iron gosh what are they yeah I suppose cast iron pots the three-legged pots and my mum has a couple of them still they're, they're hard you you have to look after them because they you know they get a battered a bit and um, and the handle and some of them even come with the lid but that is the typical pot that was used and it's a three-legged one so you can see I tried to do three little legs sticking out and then the gold and uh, the reason the donkey is grey, um, so you there I'm moving up on his face, but in the chart you can see him there, and he's got the most placid look on him, um, strolling along, munching his shamrocks. The reason the donkey is grey, I was going to change him to more of a Connemara donkey type which are a little bit more brown though there are grey ones but that actually had a sen sentimental meaning for me because I remember being really young I think well I can't be older than 10 so I must have been about eight and I might have even been younger going to a local jumble sale as a child with my mum and dad now I can't remember if it was 
we moved from like three different times. I can't remember whether it was the second move or the third move, but we went to this sale of work as they were called or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly because I was so young, but I remember I love stuffed toys. So I loved teddy bear and, and animals that were teddy bears more than dolls and things like that. Though I did have a couple of dolls, but no, I loved the cuddles. And um, all my teddies and animals have names and I still have them all at home in Ireland. Um, uh, I wouldn't dream of giving them away. And I even have one since the two since the day I was born. And um, we were at this sale of work or whatever it was called. And my dad was with me and I fell in love with these big stuff. I'll just put this down for a second. Big stuff donkeys um they were you know teddy bears and they're about he's about that size with the legs and the whole thing and uh i fell, fell in love with them when i was saying oh dad and, and my parents were always really good i mean they said you could you could have pick up one thing well they never really said it. i can't remember them saying exactly that but i knew i'd be able to have maybe one wee thing um from the thing and i i remember my dad being with me and i'm saying oh i really love it and then mom came over and she was like, oh, yeah, they're really cute. And we were pulling out the donkeys from this stand and uh, taking a look at them. And way down in the back, there were only about, I think, four or six donkeys. Maybe I can't remember. But there was one that like the stuffing wasn't as well stuffed as it could be. And this wee Ned, or Neddy as I call them, I say Ned in the chart, but in case Neddy is copyrighted or anything, but Ned, Neddy as I called him, um, okay, his head didn't stand up properly and his legs, you know, he was a bit floppy and uh, he was sitting down anyway, kind of the way he was, so his legs couldn't stand him up halfway like the other wee ones could. And I thought... Um, Oh, nobody's going to want him um, because he's not as, you know, glamorous looking or proud or whatever as the other ones, you know, that they all look so nicely stuffed. And I said to Dad, I'd like him. But Dad went, well, do you not want one of the other ones? And Mum was like, well, what about this one? It's lovely. And I went, no, nobody's going to want him. So home with me came Ned, Neddy, or Ned as I'm calling him in the chart, the donkey. So, and that's the colouring on Ned. He's got light grey and a darker, slightly darker grey. When it's stitched up, it's not, it's, it's delicate. You could go darker if you wanted to. And he's kind of got the pale undertones. And I didn't want to go overboard in the shading of the wee donkey because it would have been more threads involved. And it is quite nice in the DMC. There's, it's all DMC except for the green on the trousers, which I used Holly by Weeks Dye Works. Everything else is DMC. But, and I'm sure there is an over dyed gray that you could get that works um, for the donkey, but I didn't have any. And I thought about a couple, there was one, is it either Weeks Dye Works or classic colour it's king mackerel was the nice grey but there was a lot of white variegation in that and I thought well it won't show up on this fabric and then it'll look a bit piebald so I am um, <coughs> excuse me I stuck with the the DMC on them and uh, and I think it turns out fine and it is subtle in the it looks you see the shading more in the hair when from a distance when you're stitching you're thinking god does it show up at all but I knew it would once it, because uh, I tested out the flosses, but it's it's coming along really cute, and uh, so if you like it, um, by all means head over to my Etsy store, expanding stitches, and it's my third chart on there, and I'd love if you could support me. I'm a fledgling business lady, and every little bit of support and every comment really really helps, um. And it would be lovely to get out there. So thank you very much. But uh, yeah, so that's the wee leprechaun. And the cat, I didn't put it in the chart, but uh, he's sooty because we used to have a little black cat called Sooty. And um, she gave us some wonderful kittens. She was a rescue cat. 
actually and uh, so I myself personally have called caught said that's sooty so I'm getting all my animals in bit by bit from my childhood but uh, so that's Ned the donkey the leprechaun three pot of gold and sooty the cat and uh, yeah and then the saying to it is yeah may, may luck be with you all your days because yeah may, may luck and health be with us all so and it's a pdf uh chart as i said and you've got four charts in there so you've got black and white you've got colors color symbols you've got symbols on color and what's the other one oh the blocks exactly um and it's all dmc as i said except for um except for the week's dye works holly and one of them is the dmc which i probably should have said d dmc variegated but it's the 4045 four oh four five variegated green one that's the one on the that's for the bottom of the shamrocks and the coat ah oh, yeah that's better see and that's where you get that's in his sleeves and in the shamrocks underneath is that variegated green and it comes up lovely it's a really nice little one because i like ones that have got threads that have got a little bit of variegation as they go along but without big junks where you get lots of stripes and that one is nice so that's enough about um my new release and uh but if you do purchase it and stitch it up or any of my charts please do post on instagram um and hashtag me expanding stitches i'd love to see your progress and uh it also helped get some of my new designs out there. So that is... Ah, yes. Well, I'll talk about the giveaway actually at the end. I'm going to just put a circle away about that. Okay. So let's make a note of that there. Um, ba, ba, ba. Oh, yeah. Whips, I suppose, really. Well, part of that is whips. Um, I've been working, as I talked about in the last video, on Birdsong 1 by Prairie Schooler, the Prairie Schooler. And the last time I showed my progress, I had only got the top little bit done. Um, I think I'm stitching this on. I need to look on the video again. I think it's 28 count Lugana. It's Lugana. Um, I think it's 28 count that this is on I, in the last video i mentioned which exactly one it is i haven't picked it up for about a week um and i only did a little bit so and i changed the this thread color i've used an anchor threads because i want to switch these out into my anchor because i've got a lot of anchor and uh, so i changed the threads out and i decided to stay with the cardinal because i've got bird song too and um i was going to go with one of the other ones um but i might actually make those as little pillow i just decided to stay as because i thought i liked the way it picked up the oops you got a bit of a glare i liked the way the red picked up so i thought no oh, stick with the way it was charted so that's where i'm coming along with that one maybe that way yeah that yeah you get the color when you tilt it that way a little bit better but uh yeah it's sweet it's lovely so I want to do some more work on that so that's progress so apart from finishing october 31st getting that far on lucky days and that that's all i've started so far i've been working on um so that's bird song one um long arming uh just a bit of thing i've got um my friend tina's quilts is on the long arm at the moment i'm just figuring out a pattern to stitch on that it's a charity quilt i've got 35 quilt tops approximately from the beginning of last year before the pandemic started um with um a group that um, I set up on Facebook and they're very, very close friends and that's a whole other story and I'll tell you all about that. Um, again, they're wonderful people, but we were doing, um, since I bought my long arm machine, um, I was saying, if you send over the quilt tops to me, I'll do all the long arming for free and we'll post them off. And it was for Australia for the bushfires. 
um, to aid in the bushfires, just to give people a, cud a quilty cuddle, basically. So, but then the last year has flown by and I'm behind on getting those stitched up and I was feeling awfully guilty and, um, but the group were fabulous and um, as they said, well, you wouldn't have been here even if we got them all quilted up. One lady said, Anna, and she's a dote, um, said she wouldn't have been able to get them posted over anyway. And they probably wouldn't be the safest, you know, with fabric and everything else, even if you Febreze them. But I was like, okay, so I don't feel so guilty. So now I, that's my, what I want to do for 2021 is just get all those long armed and then another friend Sylvia said she'll give me a hand put the binding on uh, not that I need it but it's time consuming you know hand stitching at the back and um, we'll uh, we'll get those out so it'll be a case of late but or better late than never as they say so uh, that's the plan so Tina's quilts on the long arm um, okay something from uh, that was the rips yeah i'm trying to keep me track here so i'm not rambling too much red roses and chocolate which i know you've seen and it's over there i won't go pulling it all out again but it's my second design red roses and chocolate and the little gift tag my heart to you or my love to you um was my second design for Valentine's Day or for Mother's Day and it's Mother's Day in March in the UK whereas in Germany it's in May so you could still get that stitched up that's not very big either it's only just over a hundred stitches um so that's quite a thing but a lovely lady called Susan Grobe yeah Corbe um emails me and um showed me a picture of that and said i was by all means pass on i just wanted to give her a call out and a thank you so much for sending it over and for sending me the photo she stitched up red roses in chocolate and she's finished it and um i just printed out the picture and the wall here looks terracotta she said but she's actually got it it's a pale gray wall in reality and she changed the colorway so she changed it to um sort of a creamy white i guess and then the chocolate and she hand dyed her own ada at the background and she said it looks lovely against a gray wall which you could kind of imagine let's just pull up a gray whoops yeah you'd see how lovely it would be it would really pop against the against a gray wall it just in the printout and the photography it looked um it was quite terracotta looking the way you know paint paint colors change but that's um susan grober's uh red roses and chocolate and i'm gonna treasure that i've kept the email and i'm gonna keep the photo because it's the first finished ever picture of one of my designs that i've seen and i was like wow that's so cool and fabulous so thank you so much susan for sending me that email and uh, and as i said anyone else that's stitching anything else please hashtag me on instagram um under expanding stitches i'd love to i'd love to see all your progress and I will get more charts over um, or out there. I have to get stitches and I'll talk about that later on in the in the last because I can't do it all myself. I'm not that fast. Sorry if it's a long video. Oh gosh, we're an hour in nearly already. But um, after three weeks, it was like, oh, I really just, I'll just try not to think that I'm filming and just yak, as they say. Um, some little oh yes and also Jan and Tracy friends of mine have also posted pictures of their progress on it and they're staying with the the colors that are close to what I called for the red and the chocolate and uh, they're doing an amazing job as well so it's been wonderful seeing those they haven't finished them yet I'll show photos of them when they're finished um so it's it's been fabulous in those two Addressing some comments. Ah, yes, of course, with all my excitement on getting this. In video two, two, three, 
three. Now I'm in the fourth video now. God, I better I better get a bit more organized and do a few more videos. But my friend Mary sent me this gorgeous neckerchief or little shawl. And, uh, and I'll be wearing it on St. Patrick's Day. I mean, I wear it all the time. So there it is again. And of course, I said it was crocheted because I looked at this and didn't really think twice. I was more excited about actually, you know, putting it around my neck and looking in the mirror and going, oh, is it lovely? Without actually thinking, was it crocheted or knitted? And one very kind viewer, thank you so much, said uh, in the nicest possible way, it's not crocheted, it's knitted. And when I went back to bury it, I was like, oops, sorry, it was knitted, not crocheted. And I, and, um, and then another lady asked me, uh, would you be able to find out where the pattern was? So Mary ever so kindly did a bit of hunting up and the pattern, now where have I got her print out? She saved it as a download and there's a link to there. It was a free download and um, that this company do a free download every year as an online knit along. So for any of you knitters out there, there's more than likely a knit along. It might not be this one, probably isn't, but um, it uh, they'll likely, if they do them every year, they'll have other knit alongs where they give a pattern for free, which is wonderful. I personally don't knit. I can do a little, little bit of crochet. Um, knitting, I yeah, it would be another thing to start getting into. And uh, yeah, I have enough interests and hobbies at the moment, but I do love, knitted things so the company that makes this is so if you google it and do a search i'm sure you'll find it and it sounds like they do pdf downloads for anyone living in the states or australia or canada i'm sure you could get it as well you might have to change your your wools that they call out for but honestly anything would look beautiful on it and mary did a stunning job i mean she's a master crocheter and knitter um in this case it's knitting as we found out but uh, this is it it's the black sheep betwixt 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 shawl and it's called it's from the black sheep well there you go the black sheep wools is the company um uh, black sheep wools by brianna miss kelly so there, I'll just put it up a little bit closer so that you can see it. So that's what the shawl in its glory looks like. Or the neckerchief, as I call it, really. More so than a shawl. For me, a shawl is a little bit bigger, a bit more like a pashmina. So I call it a neckerchief. But, um, yeah. So that's that. So I wanted to address those comments because somebody had asked. And then I'll just take a look on some of the comments oh yes well there was some people said George who's Liz in the UK she said she found me from the shout out from Country Stitches oh my god I as I said in my last video it was um I was in tears um with the amount of love and advertising I suppose you could say but call outs that Country Stitches De Deb and Liz did on their channel um, especially because they are my absolute favourites I you know and sadly live so far away from them but I love them so much and um, from their videos and always have and um, I was so delighted and thank you to everyone that came across and watched my video and subscribed because um, please do subscribe it really helps and I haven't put ads on my videos I might put ads on the other ones but in fairness I'm not really sure how to do that yet so um, that's not important for me um, the, if I ever did it in the future it'll just be for giveaways just to cover the cost of nailing and things all over the world so that's not a priority but I'm just I'm so thankful and I love, you know, I, I think they're fantastic. And I'll always call them out in all of my videos and there'll always be a link because I adore them. So, and I think you will too. So um, that was Liz. Um, 
Yeah, one lady said uh, when I was talking about my buttons in the second video, Carol, she said she uh, she loved the memories of my nan you brought back talking about your buttons. My nan had hers in an old biscuit tin. She would use buttons of old clothes, which is, is lovely. And then some really gorgeous. Oh, it was Carmen that spotted it. Your gift was not crocheted. It was knitted. Um... Oh, yeah, we found out that the little, um, uh, I don't have them here, but the little hanging in video two, I show these little poster hanging things. A lady, Sue, found out, Sue Adams found, you can get them in Amazon in the States, the, the size that I use. So that was great to know. And Deborah Fry told me about the color that I was talking about in the last video, which is Okafenoki. Apparently, it's a huge swamp in Georgia slash Florida, so the blackish green color is appropriate. And then April, there that was you requested the pattern for the shawl, uh, the shawl, the yarn. I'm not sure what yarn. I don't think we mentioned the yarn, but I think any yarn would work beautifully in that in the, in that shawl. So they were some of the main comments. And by all means, please do comment. I love reading them. It's so nice hearing because it makes me feel like I'm chatting with you rather than just smiling and trying to remember to look in the corner where I've got the smiley face sticker um, sticking up on a post-it note behind the camera with my friend Mary's name on it and a smiley face to remember to look there instead of look, looking here. Um, but it would be lovely because uh, then I can get to know some of you as well, um, which would be really nice. So that was just some of the comments in the last video. I didn't go back into the other ones, but I might do that every week. Just pop back and read out a couple of little comments. Um, okay, well, wow. Well, with the time is flying, this is really long. I probably will have to piece. But the next thing I'm going to show you is what I promised was um, a new sampler. And I, I'm going to put that in the title of the video as well. I have the other sampler I showed you and I have another one as well. It's Spanish or Portuguese that I haven't shown you yet. But um, with all the stress of the no internet, worrying about family members and well, being concerned and giving them support is probably a bit better way for, rather than worry because there's no point worrying because you in life just you have to go along with it as it comes and get over every little hurdle as you go along um but with the internet being down and Oh, just lots of little bits and pieces. My friend Andy, um, well, for Valentine's Day, gave me a bunch of gorgeous flowers that I forgot to take a photo of, as you do. And um, so, and they got a florist to deliver those, which was so amazing and so sweet and so thoughtful. Um, and he had decided to, and I'm okay, I'm telling a story, but he had, he was going to keep this back for an Easter present. And then because it was just a rough month in February, um, with so many little things, you know, that just uh, sometimes they accumulate a bit. And, um, he decided to bring this over and gift it to me. And, um, he had gone online and purchased it and, um, and gave it to me and I think it's lovely and I'm going to reproduce it so I'll if it doesn't exist out there from another pattern I don't think it does but oh dear what was the name of the I've forgotten the name of the lady that stitched it he knew it I need to look it up but it's 1901 was when it was stitched and um, it's an old sampler. Now, forgive the frame. That's the way he got it. So it's obviously someone had the old sampler and it was likely in an old frame and it didn't suit their decor. Or maybe it wasn't in a frame and they just bunged it in a frame to sell it. No idea. But um, I haven't taken the back of the frame off. It's literally only been since Valentine's Day and it's been in the living room because I've been tidying up and I want to take the back off and... Make sure it's not, I don't know, I don't think it's glued in. I think it's just pressed in. Um, but isn't it lovely and colourful? 
and it's part of the threads have actually worn away with time. You can see the fuzzily, oh, there's a lot of glare. You can see the fuzzily, okay, that's a little bit better. You can see the fuzzy bits in the stitching when you look up close where the thread was and it's actually worn away. So, and it's a cute sampler. It's unfinished in parts or she's deliberately left gaps. I think she probably was going to put something else over here. That's the date, 1801, the way it was written. And the name, I need to look to see. We did have the name of it and I can't remember and I forgot to make a note of it. Um, but it's, I think the colours are pretty. It's an unusual kind of a colourway and I quite like that with the tealy greens. And then the different reds and the peaches and the yellows. I think it's really pretty. So I just, oh, there's a terrible glare. Oh, that's a bit better. There you go. But isn't that lovely? Wasn't that an amazing gift? Because he knows I like love samplers. And he's, okay, he's a wonderful man. And um, he had been asking me questions about, I'm just going to put this down here safe. He'd been asking me questions about how do you know whether it's an original sampler, etc. And um, I mean, I'm no expert in it, but I was giving him some tips and I didn't even know that he had, um, yeah, that he had purchased this. So my greatest thanks. It's wonderful. Really, really cool. And I love it. And I will reproduce it. Um, I've got a question to ask at the very end as well on whether, on feedback from you guys on whether I should do all the research or do the research afterwards and just get the chart out there, but we'll see. So, um, yeah, thank you again, Andy, dear. That was wonderful. Hall, my Lord, look at the time. Okay, Hall, very little, actually, I, that I can remember. Um, I do have something coming, two pieces coming, uh, but they're not the patterns as such. I'm trying to be good because I've got a big stash. Well, it's not as gigantic as some people. But I've got a stash of patterns and I thought, no, I'll try to be a little bit good now in February. And um, and I was busy stitching and everything else rather than shopping, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> but um, I all I did was I bought to try and I had to, it came the whole way from America because on Amazon DE, which is the German Amazon, even though I shop on all the different Amazons, um, yeah, the only one came through and I wanted to try it. And it's, of course, sticky board that everyone talks of. Um, I haven't actually played with it yet. I wanted to show it to you. Um, it's. I was amazed on how quite hard it is. Now, this is the mounting board. Whether or not there's another version in the States, I don't know. This is the only one I could get a hold of. Whether or not there's more of a foam board or something or whether this is what everybody uses and this is all there is, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's sticky and it's acid free and etc. Um, high tech and yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, it's expensive in a sense though. I mean, I think that, okay, well, it's expensive relatively. I mean, it, if it makes your life easy, yes, perfectly. But I think I paid about 25 euros for that, um, which I thought was a little bit pricey. Um, but um, I really was curious to see um, to see what it's like. So I want to see, is there an equivalent acid-free version over here that might be a little bit more pricey? Or maybe I can find a distributor or I can contact a distributor for... Um, to get the you know to get it imported in and sell it maybe i don't know we'll see um but i really really wanted to try that um so that'll be fun to play with and then all i bought was um a second hand book on one of the book websites and it's one of the leisure arts an old one all through the house and it's got some pretty santas in here um i don't know if i'm gonna get them all stitched but you do have some like a cute little house oops Bentley house does it show what's inside no there's not a cover page of the one but I do collect these and they're not always the easiest to find I just like looking at them and they're just flicking through there's some lovely one like look at that I mean I think that's gorgeous at the crib 
That's a beautiful one of the crib. The nice thing about them is they put all their pictures at the front as well so that you um you don't have to worry about missing the chart. A load of little ornaments. Um somebody may design that. Don't know Chris Kringle. Isn't that quite cool? Little stand up Santa. A lot of work in there. It's nearly like a dimensions kit. That one, but beautiful. Um just some really cute ones. Look, I mean, just even the placement. Look at that for a bedroom of lace and pillows. Oh yeah, it's so cute. It's uh ironing that lace wouldn't be so much fun though. Um some stockings, that's just a flyer that was in it. Just to show you, I suppose I'm, you could call this a flick through, but it's just in case you wanted to see some pictures. Oh, and then we're into the charts, okay. But yeah, so that was the, is there anything on the back page? No, just the general stitch. And so the one I got is all through the house and it was only a couple of euros. I mean, it took forever to get here. It took about three months. Um, because I tend to notice that, that if I get it, then it says it's to, it's shipping and then it was delivered and then it hasn't been delivered. And I found out um, that sometimes they come about like three weeks or a month after they'd said they've delivered. So um, I generally try to hang on and give them the chance because it does take away, it take a while to get here. Um, oh yeah, okay. And as I said, forgive the video being super long. You can always pause it and come back and watch more. Um, I found something, oh, I think it was in January, actually. And I forgot to mention it in my haul. And I forgot to take a picture of the original um, packaging it came in. But, and I obviously can in the future, now that I have a business, um access things wholesale but i'm i'm trying to set up the etsy store and all the legislation for physical products but i needed a little bit for myself and i'm not going to order ten thousand meters of trim <laughs> to sit around gathering dust um so early on so i thought well i just want a little bit of ribbon for finishing myself and um i ordered these on amazon now if it's a bit of a glare forgive that um and they're a bundle of their trims they're velvet ribbon um probably not the real real velvet like the proper french velvet you get in dresses but the more artificial velvet. but it's beautiful it's really really nice it's like your normal velvet trim ribbon you would get um there's 27 meters in total and 30 colors so inside all of the little swirls, there's actually quite a few colors. Now I'll show you. The company is called this. I, they're Chinese. I'm sure they're Chinese. I, I mean, they must be. They were reasonably priced. But the company is called Chinook Crafts. And I bought them on Amazon. And um, as I said, I only bought the one packet to try. But I'll show you, for example, now I'm literally just opening, or well, maybe I'll open my, my colours, colours of my logo, which are the turquoises and the greens. Um, and I'll never get this all back in again, but they come all rolled up like that. And you've got your colours, so that's a blue. Now, it's, a, it's as I said, it's the, it's a soft velvet, but it's, you can tell it's not the real French velvet, but it's perfect for finishing hang on let me just where's my board there i'm just getting seriously better let's try and do it this way that might work better ah there you go you see so you can see the velvet now i mean okay it's got a few dings in it from being rolled and stuff but for the price i thought it was pretty good so per roll there's about four colors see that's a nice mossy green and this has got a nice Kelly green and then a little gray which is quite good but um, yeah I thought for the price and I paid 13 euros for the pack 
of 27 and um and i checked them out today they dropped to euro in price at the moment um so and that's the way they come they come in the little um the little baggies all rolled up like this so i mean if you want to know what colors you have it would be quite cool to un unravel them but i just store them up with my little basket up there just folded in like this at the moment because I can always open it a bit and flick through if I'm looking for a particular colour. But they're enough to do a little small cushion or around. I think, well, if it's 27 metres and there's 30 colours, you're probably, I think it's about a metre. I don't think I meant measured a whole one. But I'm guessing if that's a diameter of about... And centimeters going down yeah yeah i'd say there's about a meter meter or that meter in a bit of each ribbon there's 27 27 meters in the whole thing so um i think they're quite worth check, checking out they're handed up in your stash rather than that you can pull out when you want to finish a little piece of cross stitch and add a little trim around especially if you're doing the sticky board ones that you just want to put around the edges and stitch in or on a cushion or just to make a little bow you know and pop button on or a little bead and then you've got and then you can do the little cuts at the corners to get the little bow shape and um i thought that would be great so i thought i'd pass that on for you so that's the name of them again on amazon there you go and i've no affiliation to them i'm just passing on what i found um so they're okay for the price i mean they're not amazing but they're okay they're grand if you're going to be sticking glue on it and you're not that bothered about it, it, it i think it's fine Um, so that's that treasures nearly there not too far to go uh so far i think for the next video i'll probably remember more things that i wanted to talk about in this one but uh we'll keep going treasures um well there's so many different treasures that i have i almost always think what will i pull out for this video because um yeah i have quite a lot but i thought i'd pull out um yeah this little thing now there's loads of these that you can still get i bought this in german well actually i bought it from an austrian lady in austria so it was a bit more pricey to get it shipped over from austria it's just your wee sewing basket um not sure how old this one is i'm guessing probably 1950s maybe a little bit older um they were churned out in multiples um you know over the years and there's different variations you can get you get a lot with fabric on them and all these german style um ones you can get that are people still, still selling with vintage um fabric coated on them they're mainly like the lid is a kind of a cardboard basically um and you can see like it's just you know stapled round but um it is the i think it's the original one because the staples and all look like they're not you know this normal staples and i've been putting stuff in it and it comes with a plastic tray and then it's just you know it's not it's got a little plastic rim inside here they're mass produced they're not handmade um and but it's just a lovely little box and i've just chucked some bobbin to dmc because i'm moving away from bobbinating well kind of it's nice having the full set in bobbins that you can pull out easily um i just i um, haven't got the patience anymore to, to go putting things on bobbins though i appreciate i still have all my bobbins um and i pull them out and use them because they're and for traveling they're fab um but uh yeah so i use a mix of everything at the moment but what i really loved was this around the outside which is the oh gosh what is it called they use it on chairs it's the weaving of the the mesh it's not wicker but it's the what they used to use on chair backs and chair seats and it's that that attracted me about this one so that's one of my little treasures and then the boxes so it's nothing you know ancient but i just think it's adorable and i actually do use it i do carry it around the house because i am um, sew in my bedroom before i go to bed at night or go to sleep at night and i also sew in my living room so if i'm working on the same project and i want to continue on well then i just i tend to grab this and have um stuff in there or i use it for taking flosses out that i want to do a floss toss with 
and then leave them in there. So I, all the ones that are in there at the moment, I actually have to put back because uh, I had all of those pulled out for Santa's greatest gifts and I still haven't put them back yet. But uh, yeah, so that's the little box. Um, but I collect, um, I do collect vintage sewing boxes. Um, I love them. And uh, I've got a new, a new one ordered actually. I got in the secondary market that was quite an unusual shape. And that's coming, so I'll be able to show you that one too. It's cute. I have to give it a good clean when it arrives, and um, I won't be doing anything with it. I'll just keep it as the wood, and uh, it's yeah, cool. So nearly there. Call outs. Um, I'd like to call out Stitchy Witch Forty Two Audrey. Um, she's made some of the loveliest comments and messaged me and. I've been following her videos and I've subscribed to her too. And um, I think you should go and watch her videos. She, like us here, though in the States, I know they've had everything from fires to blizzards of ice and still are in Texas, especially. And you've still some cold spells. We had the same. We, um, we had the first proper winter really for about two weeks, two and a half weeks with the, when the ice storm came across and you did have to pull out proper winter boots we had like a lot of snow and it was real beautiful powdery snow that stayed and it went to minus 18 so it was the first time in about 10 years we've hit those temperatures we've um germany used to have down to when i first came over and uh, which is over 20 years ago i remember it being more than 20 years um minus 30 at one point and um we haven't had in the last 10 years i'd say it hasn't been that cold um our winter doesn't seem to really be lasting um so that was really quite fun and it was beautiful too because it was stayed so cold and crisp you didn't get that slushy melty gray sloppy snow it was lovely um but now the temperatures are all back up they're around like 14 degrees and all the snow has gone again so um and spring has started um flowers are the hay pollen or the tree pollen uh, hay fever tree pollen is out hazelnut and everything already that already starts in february but we might get some snow in april you never know we do here we tend to get a cold chill everything seems to be shifting but whether or not the ice storms um affected that I don't know but yeah keep safe everyone in the states without electricity and with the ice storms and everyone that it's affected that's really really hard um and hopefully you'll be okay now um and it'll get warmer and better and less treacherous so um stitchy witch 42 audrey has put up two floss tubes recently about that topic and a little bit about her stitching and what she's been doing and I'd recommend you go and give her um, a peek and a look out and a subscribe too because uh, she's a lovely lady she's really nice and it was lovely of her to reach out and comment to me um, Country Stitches of course Deb and Liz just love them and I think you all will too go back and watch all their old videos from the beginning binge watch them they're brilliant um, and also um, Michelle Bendy Sitcher, I was tossing and turning in bed again last night from hay fever and or the tree pollen and um, I was asleep and then I woke up and I heard a ding ding on my um, tablet saying um, she was putting up a live, a stitchy chat live. So I, um, I just opened that up and I thought, oh, I'll get a glass of water and, and watch. And that was a really nice watching her stitching away and chatting and um, she's a new designer as well I mean she started designing over a year ago or so and uh, she's obviously really famous in Floss Tube and she's yeah a very unique nice kind person um, so I would go and uh, give her a look see as well so that's the end of uh, my ramblings for today and it's probably three times longer a video than normal but uh, no wonder after three weeks of not being able to chat but um, 
Okay, so the first thing is um, for lucky days, if you'd like the chance to win a PDF copy of lucky days, um, I'm going to do the drawing on uh, not this Sunday, the calendar, not this Sunday coming, but after the worst calendar. Let me just see what date that is. So this Sunday is the 7th, the 14th. So I'll do the drawing for, I'll just write this down, 14th of March drawing. Okay, so I'll do the drawing for that on Sunday, the 14th of March. And I'll probably have a video up on the 17th for St. Patrick's Day anyway. But I would like to pop another, do another video within a week. Fingers crossed. Um... But say that the closing date for that drawing is Sunday, the 14th of March. So I'm going to give away three PDFs um, of Lucky Days. And for the chance to be in to win one of those, be a subscriber. Follow me on Instagram and um, leave a comment with the word lucky in it in your l-u-c-k-y i'll be checking checking and i'll um use the random comment generator and um pick out three winners um for the pdf chart of lucky days from me expanding stitches and so that's that so sunday the 14th of march oh yes be over 18 be a subscriber like the video um so that i can get your well be over 18 so that i can get your email address legally and don't mention giveaway don't mention gift try not to say win anything that might flag up some of the trolls that are out there or people that are just greedy and don't even cross stitch if you can i'd rather it went to somebody that loves to cross stitch please so uh yeah best of luck with that one and i'm delighted to pass those on and the nice thing about a pvf as well is that you'll have it you know within a couple of days i won't be posting it or emailing you the second um you get in contact with me but within a couple of days you'll get it and uh without waiting for the post so that's quite nice especially with the postage nowadays the next question I was thinking, you can also leave a comment for me um, if you'd like to, because I'm kind of trying to wreck your brains really, or think, get input. Um, I have the other chat sampler that I've got, but I don't have time to research and I don't really know where to begin. I, I'm not on the websites that are like archive me and um, going back in history and everything else. So the first thing is if somebody would like that is loves researching people and dates and following through and trying to find out information, please get in contact me, send, send an email to my email address below or message me on Instagram. If you fancy giving me a hand to do that, um, you'll be credited, of course, in any of the charts or anything like that, that I, when I do it, um, that would be great. But my question also is, for example, the other chart or even this one, should I chart it up without, you know, do the reproduction chart of it or especially the other one um, as well without necessarily knowing who the stitches history was, who they were, you know, where they lived. I mean, we have the dates on some of them. But I'm kind of thinking, um, and I can just take a photo of the original on the front cover. Um, I'm wondering, would it be better to just do the chart and reproduce it and get it out there for people to stitch? Or should I wait and hold back until I've found people that can help me do the research on who the stitcher could have been, what the history is, etc.? Because I know other designers kind of do it both ways. Um, and some do their research themselves. But I honestly, I, I won't be able to, to, to put the amount of time required into that. As well as stitch and create. 
Um, if I wasn't doing that, then I definitely could. So my question is, should I chart it up without the research added? And maybe add that later if we find out more, you know, in a PDF or something, an info that I can put in Google Drive. Or should I wait until I have all the research and info and then chart, uh, release, the, release the sampler chart? So if you'd like to, could you give me some input on your thoughts on that? What would you prefer? Would you rather have the chart so that you can start stitching it without the info straight away? Or would you rather have all the info as well before you start stitching? So uh, please leave a comment down below and uh, I'd look forward to reading those and getting some feedback back. And um, yeah, thank you very much. And if anyone wants to do any model stitching in the future, uh, please let me know. Um, get in contact with me through my email address, but I'll be asking that question again in a later video anyway too, because I do need other people to do some stitching um, for my designs that... Uh, I've got planned. So that's all of my news so far. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for sticking it out so long. Um, it's been lovely chatting with you, even though I'm, I'm going to really enjoy listening, bleh, reading your comments and um, yeah, just saying hi and be safe, stay kind, keep healthy, and all the best. Thank you very much. Until the next time. Bye.